Hi, my name is Simon and welcome to my little garage here in Denmark. If it's the first time you're watching my channel, I want to wish you very welcome. You could of course consider subscribing. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you like what you see. When it comes to fuel delivery of modern cars, most people actually do know what an O2 sensor is. It measures the oxygen in the exhaust gas and tells the electronic control unit uh, what the result is and, and then the fuel can be uh, adjusted accordingly. But the O2 sensor and how it works is actually only half of the story when it comes to fuel delivery. The other half is the fuel trims. The fuel trims is what reacts on that measurement to ensure that the right air fuel ratio is achieved. In most cases and in many uh, engine loads you could say it's going to be lambda 1 which will be 14.1, no, 14.7 to, to 1, the stoichiometric uh, ratio. The fuel trims is actually also there uh, for another purpose, which, yeah, you could say is the main purpose. It is to achieve the emissions uh, given by the uh, regulations, government and so, in order so that the car does not pollute um, at all in the whole lifetime of the car. There is this requirement that if a car needs to go to drive with lambda 1, it needs to do that in the whole lifetime of the, of the car basically. You could imagine that over time uh, a MAF sensor gets contaminated like, like here, so it doesn't measure all the air passing through, it will result in a lean mixture and that uh, we simply cannot have. Now remember a catalytic converter is only effective uh, around lambda 1. If you move 5 or 10 percent away it doesn't really uh, convert all the particles, uh, CO and unburned gas, un unburned gas. So the car needs to maintain its emissions in the whole lifetime. And that's why there is this need for a system which somehow can adjust to the changes of the engine over time. It's also what is known as adaptations. Another uh, vital thing about this system is that if the fuel trim sees that now I need to compensate too much, I need to be too active, then it should inform the driver that something is wrong with your emissions and the check engine light will then go on. Now let's go uh, move on to what it actually is fuel trims because it consists of mainly two terms. We have the short-term fuel trim, we have the long-term fuel trim. If they are combined, they are referred to as uh, total trim. And when I mean combine, it's basically just add them together. It may, it'll make sense in a moment. Where we have the short-term fuel trim, it is an immediate reaction to the O2 sensor. It is a compensation that is permanently active at all time. It responds immediately to the signal from the O2 sensor. If it's lean or rich, it makes uh, adjustments, adjustments accordingly to that signal. Then we have the long-term fuel trim. It's not responding as a direct input from the O2 sensor. The long-term fuel trim is more like a new set point from the electronic control unit. It responds over time. So if we have, uh, let's use the example with the contaminated MAF sensor. If we have the short-term fuel trim starting to uh, tell the electronic control unit that we have a little lean mixture here, the short-term fuel trim will react immediately on that, starting to add more fuel. What we have here is a scale zero, that's adding no fuel from the base map. And if we have 10, well, we are adding 10%. The short-term fuel trim will immediately react on the O2 sensor. And if it keeps on adding more fuel, at some point the long-term fuel trim will know that and then it will start increasing, basically making it a new set point for the fuel map, you could say. So if we have 0% here, which is the factory setting, if we over time keep injecting more fuel to maintain the correct ratio, it's going to make an offset. In this case, we have an offset right here. And we could actually imagine that this contaminated MAF sensor gets even more contaminated, so the mixture is lean and the fuel trim will then try to compensate on that. The short term is going to 
uh, ensure that more fuel is injected and over time the long-term fuel swim will move accordingly. However, the long-term fuel swim is now adding so much fuel, 10% more than intended, then the check engine light will come on, basically saying to the driver, hey, something is wrong here, you need to take it to a workshop. If we, let's use this example, let's say we have a fuel pressure regulator, which is uh, somehow not adjusting the fuel pressure correct in the fuel rail, thereby we'll have a higher pressure in the fuel rail, we'll inject more fuel to the cylinders. That's going to make a, a rich mixture. But the short term fuel trim uh, will respond immediately on the O2 sensor saying, hey, we have a rich mixture here, I need you to reduce the amount of fuel being injected. And in a couple of, uh, not many moments after, the long-term fuel trim is going to uh, move in the same way as the short-term, making it uh, a new set point where we are actually injecting a little less fuel. I have a small example here to make it more understandable. Let's say we have a MAF sensor here, measuring the air 14.7 grams per second, telling the ECU that at the same, if we want to do lambda 1, it will be equal to 1 gram of fuel per second. But uh, let's say we have this MAF sensor here. Then we will actually have, uh, let's say we add 10% more. If we make a total trim, long term and short term, we add them together, it's a total of 10%. Instead of injecting fuel, having the injector open for 2 milliseconds, then we will have it for 2.2 milliseconds. That's basically what it does. So I'm going to make a small example and then I'm going to simply wrap up because I have taken my little Suzuki and I will put on my scan tool and will be watching the long term and short term fuel trim while I will disconnect one of the injectors. And this will result in a very lean mixture of course and we'll be able to see how the short term first of all responds to the as an immediate reaction to the O2 sensor and then you'll actually be able to see how the long term also starts adjusting. One final thing, if you really uh, get to understand how this works, it is a, a vital part of your diagnostic routine when you are uh, doing diagnostics on engine uh, faults because it's actually very good to know whether uh, too much fuel is injected or too little. It could be you have a leak in an intake channel, it's actually, then you will be able to see that on the fuel trims as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you want to see this little example. Take care and stay safe. Bye. So I got my scan tool connected and you can actually see the fuel trims if uh, the total trim is uh, approximately uh, 3 to 5 percent, it's just perfect. I'm going to disconnect the injector right now, making it a very, very lean condition. And what you actually can see now is that the short-term fuel trim reacts immediately as a response to the lean condition. The mixture is very lean now. It's adding almost 20% more fuel than it was supposed to. And what you now is able to see is that the long-term fuel trim is starting to increase as well, making it a new set point for the uh, injection, basically. So there you have it. I hope you like this video and as always feel free to write or contact me if you have anything or any questions.